So hello and welcome everybody to the latest edition of the Quantum Compass. Uh, this is episode number 18. My name is David Farrell and yes, that's correct. I'm joined in person by my co-host, the one and only... Bilal Varan. Hi everybody. Right, so if you've been following this for a while, have you noticed that sometimes we do the uh, shows together in person and sometimes we have to do them from different places? That's partly down to many factors, not least all, of course, my accident earlier this year, but... We have been working with the energy of this particular wave spell, the Red Magnetic Skywalker, which is also the energy of my own glyph, to skywalk me from Mexico to here in Texas so that we could be together at this very, very powerful and auspicious time. So we'd love to hear from all of you who have been following the energy of the Skywalker in this wave spell. Please do put comments. We love to hear you. And of course, please do hit like and subscribe if you like what we're sharing, because it helps us with the algorithms on the YouTube game. So, Bella, we are moving into the way spell of the White Well Bridger, right, from September the 11th to September the 23rd, which does also include a very powerful um, eclipse and full moon and the Libra equinox. So we're going to be looking at all of those and more. But where are we going to start today, Bella? With the presentation, as usual. I don't. And I do hope that you went into some kind of adventure for this Skywalker wave spell. That's what we definitely tried to do, the manifestation point and the liberation point brought us into one of our adventures, as usual. And that is what we want to show, that there is a flow, wave spell after wave spell, we can achieve amazing things if you get onto the, the flow of things, of time by using the sacred round, which is the Solkin and the galactic um, calendar that we're using. So here we have the world bridger. It's um, this glyph here that I've highlighted on the left. And if you can see there, it looks like a skull. I was getting that image. Yes, is that yes, correct? It is because skull, it's right? connected to death. Mm -hmm. But death like in the tarot cards, which means uh, an end and a new beginning. So it's a very, very powerful wave spell to end things that we don't need anymore. And I think we're going to see it even in the world arena. Things finishing and things starting. Yeah. So let's go into the world bridger. First, a reminder that we are still in the year of the blue storm. So it's going to be stormy in many aspects uh, between now and July 2025 when it finishes. So there will be moments. So what we need to remember when we see the chaos energy playing out in our lives, in our social environment and in the world uh, scene is that all of this is going to catalyze the transformation that we need to uh, quicken the energy so we can move forward into what we need, which is the beginning of new earth. So it's going to be the collapse of many things, personal uh, and in partnerships and in many other different ways so that we can move and kind of streamline what is it that you want to be going with clarity. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, the energy just gets more and more intense. We've got that storm and then we've got the moon, of course, of the scorpion. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to share with us about that? So I talked about this in the last uh, in the previous show, but we are still in this energy up to August 23rd. Um, uh, sorry, up to September 19th, which is just a few more days of this. But it's really intense and I'm sure you're seeing it there with people being a little bit more um, polarized, uh, arguments coming up, division coming up in peoples, in groups. We've seen it in different groups. So yeah. we see that playing out not only in our lives, in the groups, but also in the, in the world scene. So if you have been experiencing this, understand that we have been talking about this, you know, it's necessary to learn to work with polarity and duality and come to a point of, okay, we all have a different perspective and the solution is not to keep on creating division, but to accept that everyone has a different point of view and nobody has the only truth. So we need to go beyond that, which is what's been happening. How can we all collaborate and play together, even though we all see reality in a different way? That is our big challenge, right? Yeah, very much so. And you know, the energy of the, the Scorpion Moon is going to take us up towards the end of this wave spell. But with all of the other energies, I think that we have to understand that when there is the end or the death of something, that doesn't necessarily mean it's totally the end, because we're going to get, see that very much with the Pisces Eclipse shortly. But when there's the end of something, there's also the opportunity for the beginning of something. So you may have to collapse something in your personal life, uh, it could be, or your your business or something that it, that is really important to you. But that doesn't mean that it has to be the end of that. This is time for transformation and evolution. So I think as long as we hold that as a potential, 
potentiality that we can then navigate death processes much more easily. And integrating shadows yeah. and accepting that everybody has a, a shadow aspect to themselves. Can you live with somebody understanding they also have their shadows? And the, the idea is to be able to work together, uh, accepting that we all have a darker and a lighter side because it's part of who we are. We came to this world to experience exactly that. Well, and the Scorpion energy is very, very good at showing that, whether we happen to have Scorpio strongly in our natal charts or not, the energy of the Scorpion is also always trying to bring out poison and show where poison is. And rather than react and project against that, when maybe it comes up in you, the trick is to see it within yourself and say, hey, I think I can alchemize this, which is always where the ability to catalyze a polarity comes in, right? Mm -hmm. So thank God there is a new moon <laughs> starting on September the 20th which goes up to October 17th. So the end of this wave spell of the World Bridger is going to be in this moon. And it's a moon of service. It connects us with the power of connectivity. So maybe you want to go into a group. Uh, the totem is the deer and it's telling us reconnect to your vulnerable side, but experience more of the artistic gifts, reconnect with poetry, music, uh, with beautiful things, with nature, with being more gentle. So after all of this intensity that we are experiencing, we want to go into maybe being of service to somebody. Who can you help in your family, in your group? Try to show kindness and whatever you have to offer. Try to put your um, your gifts and talents, talents to the uh, service of others because that is how we can connect heart to heart. And don't do it because you're expecting anything from them, but because it is connecting to your heart. You want to share with other people and show them that, we can help people every day. You just need to go outside and see how many people can do with our help. Even if it's just a smile, even if it's just helping them cross the road. Even uh, There are so many things we can do for people. I mean, even offering food. There are so many things mm -hmm. that we can put of service. Right. And the deer is considered to be the highest purity of energy by the witch only people of Mexico, who, of course, connected very much to the sacred plant medicine of peyote or peyotito. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's really, really interesting. But also I was just looking at my astro diary, Annabella, and I see that September the 20th, the first day of this uh, new moon is when Mars squares Lilith, which we'll be having a look at a little bit later in the astrology. And then it finishes on October the 17th with a full moon in Aries. Mm -hmm. So the start and ending of this particular electric moon of service have some pretty, really strong energies, which we're going to try and bring into the mix and uh, somewhat create a navigational chart, as we always try to through these shows. Mm -hmm. And we've already seen some deer around right. here, right? Yesterday. We, yeah, we've seen quite a few animals since we've been here. Quite a few of them represented as totems in the moons uh, of the Mayan uh, lunar calendar. So yeah. maybe we'll talk a bit about that later, too. So we are going to invite you to transition from the second moon into the third moon of service, uh, we reconnecting to that part of us that is like uh, vulnerable, uh, that wants to help others, that is honest, more naive, mm -hmm. uh, more transparent, that wants to be of service. So let's bring that into our next part of the journey because we're going to need it for sure. Um, I've been talking about the castle, so we have moved now to the second part or second castle and the second wave spell of that white castle, which is all to do all to do with refining the energy. Right. I just want to also allude to this particular castle. The four wave spells are incredibly powerful. We have the red uh, Skywalker, we have the White World Bridger. We have the blue storm, which, of course, is the waste spell of the energy of this year. Yeah. And then we round out with the yellow shuban, I believe. So you can kind of start to see the flow and how powerful this refining castle mm -hmm. actually is. And actually, September the 20th, the commencement of this new dear moon is also the day of manifestation mm -hmm. in this waste spell. So we can start to see how we can really fine tune these energies, which is actually also in the astrology for this waste spell, which will come to shortly but what do you think Bella? I, so what I think, that, yeah, yeah. What, what David is mentioning here is we can see a fractal of 52 yeah. days in the process where with the Skywalker we went out uh, to the 5D and other dimensions we went to uh, it, try to explore what is it that we need for this moment now with the world bridger, we're going to be bridging worlds, but also giving end to many things that we now understand we don't need anymore so we can focus on something. And then there'll be a catalyzing energy with the blue storm, which is the next wave spell. 
And we finish this castle with the energy of the yellow human, which is, okay, ready with intelligence. I know where we're going. Let's activate the cosmic human within us. So this is a fractal of the process, the bigger process we're living. Right. And maybe some of you out there who have the Skywalker glyph would probably have noticed that our key ally is the well bridger. And when you really think about it, our Skywalker's job, amongst other things, is to be a tracker. We track timelines. We track eventualities. We go into the past to fix things. But that's that's a kind of a weird job because it's not very grounded in 3D. So we need the help of our white world bridger friends and allies, uh, which weirdly, as a Skywalker, have quite a few in my life, which is really nice to help us bring the energy down, bringing the energy of heaven 5D down to Earth 3D. And uh, a lot of what we're trying to do for the show, right, Bella, is break down these seemingly unobtainable ideas and spaces into something that we all inhabit all the time and but maybe just haven't been conscious of so much until now. Mm -hmm. So this is the um, <laughs> wave spell here seen on the Solkin, starting on day 66 up to day 78. We start with the white wall bridger and finish it here with the white mirror from September 11th through September 23rd. Well, so just, can we just go back there a second? I just want to, again, uh, draw everyone's attention to the three uh, green uh, squares, which are gap or galactic activation portal days. And if I've got my calculations right, but at the very last one, uh, kin number 77 is the day of the Libra equinox. And I think um, number 72 is on the eclipse on the 17th, if that's correct. I think so. Wow. So we have two full power days to access the center of the universe on a partial lunar full moon eclipse and Li Libra equinox. So these are important. When we know how we can send and receive information and messages on these gap days, we can really call forth a lot more help and intelligence from the universe itself. Yes. Nice. Thank you, Bella. Okay. Uh, so this is the glyph, um, part of the white family of glyphs in the Solkin. And let's talk about this wave spell. It's the sixth one since the Solkin started. And the white world bridger is all to do with life and death. It, we're bridging also. It's like going through the veils as well of the different dimensions. Um, it's reconnecting with the spirit of the ancestors. It's letting go of any attachments that we have currently that do not serve us anymore. We need to come to that point of, okay, enough. I saw how toxic this is or how my limiting beliefs don't let me move forward. I'm still stuck, whatever it is. You need to come to that point of making the decision for yourself so that you uh, prepare yourself for the new cycle. This also has to, to do with forgiveness for other people uh, and gratitude for whatever role they played in your life. The best point to get to is that point of forgiveness for themselves and for yourselves. But when you understand that whatever has happened to you had a big uh, mission, had something to teach you, and there was a big lesson behind everything, then you understand that there was a purpose to, to everything and you, it's easier to let go. You understand the importance of that experience. It may take months, maybe sometimes years to get to that point, but, but this is a very key wave spell to be able to let go, to surrender to things, to release with serenity, to be able to transmute all of that, whatever uh, connections there were, there were a little too much friction or anything that has happened in the last uh, few weeks or months for you. Or even the last four years, maybe. <laughs> four or years. maybe even most of our life, lives, who knows, depending on what your perspective on your reason for being here right now is. Mm -hmm. But I mean, look at the qualities you're bringing through there on the slide. But I mean, I'm just making notes because I'm like, wow, this is so relevant for the energy of the moment, what we're all experiencing, but also in terms of the astrology. Okay. During this wave spell with, of course, the uh, full moon being in Pisces and Neptune being at 29 degrees of Pisces, that very much is about the end mm -hmm. of stuff, mm -hmm. which gives rise to the beginning of something. And and here we see the connection as well. So the Skywalker was teaching us how to go multidimensional and explore. And now the World Bridger is telling us and inviting us to explore that multidimensional realms through the power of death, meaning everything that is we're ready to let go of and the guidance of our ancestors. So it's a very good wave spell as well to reconnect with anything that you can do uh, in terms of moving forward with all timelines and the help of your lineage and ancestors. Uh, it has the action to equalize and the essence of opportunity. So it's only when we let go and our hands are empty again that we can receive a new opportunity to move forward with that. 
But if your hands are busy with things that you're trying to juggle, you're not be going to be able to receive anything. So what are you ready to let go of is what this is telling you. So that after this, we can reconnect with the sixth sense and with the telepathy and the intuition and the time traveling and all of these new gifts that are going to come online as we continue this process. Right. I mean, what I love about the way that these glyphs all work, which, of course, being the Skywalk, a third eye, telepathy, intuition and time travel are very much energies that we also work. With, but we have the difficulty that we're not so rooted in 3D. So we need to be able to communicate with those who can. But as Bella has just said, I think that many people are going to be experiencing a waking up over all of these abilities because it's part of the transition. Mm -hmm. But also as that comes online, more responsibility comes with it, but also more perception comes with it with more perception comes more visibility to see what is really, really going on. So there are lots of different ways of handling these energies, but always we need to be staying centered and grounded mm -hmm. um, because otherwise things can get a little intense, a little bit too much. Yeah, uh, this is also the wave spell where uh, we may even be helping lots of people cross over. Oh. That may be in the, in the ethers very palpable as well. And the shadow work that we will be doing uh, over this wave spell has to do with control issues, uh, fear of death. We need to see it as a process that is common to us and we are living and learning and experiencing uh, so that we can continue our evolution. If you still have resentment, and when you talk about resentment is the core wound that then develops into, when we talk about biodecoding, resentment is connected to cancer and many other illnesses. So if the Bioshock or the root cause of your emotional issue or core wound is a, some kind of resentment, it then develops into something else. So it's very, very important to let go of any resentment that you have for anybody, be able to get to the core of it and see it from a different perspective so that you're able to release and let go whatever emotion is stuck there. Uh, the other shadow to work with in this wave spell is the unacceptance of cycles of life and death. Some people uh, really struggle with that. Yeah. Uh, and we need to understand we're part of nature. In nature, we have spring, summer, fall, and winter. That's part of the na nature of things. Yeah. Relationships also have different seasons, uh, and everything has that cycle. So we just need to be able to roll with those cycles. Right. And uh, just uh, want to share a little personal story, if I may, Bella, from last night. Uh, we, we were awoken at four o'clock this morning uh, by something running around on the roof that sounded kind of heavy and slightly uh, worrying. So it forced me to get up. I went outside and lo and behold, it was a white barn owl. Now, uh, that's actually the next moon coming after the deer, isn't it? The owl. And the owl is always associated with the other world. With many of these six sense powers, very connected also to the kind of energies of Scorpio. It's that time of year, death and rebirth. But also the owl is the uh, the messenger of the world of the dead. So I think that what Bella is really uh, sharing here is very important. None of us in the Western world like to talk about death. Everyone thinks it's morbid. But as the Dalai Lama used to say, he used to meditate on his own death and his reincarnation five times a day so that he would be OK with it. And he actually said he became very excited about what was coming next for him. So I think that as long as we have this kind of attitude of seeing death as a, an opportunity to restart um, something to transform, whether it's in the physical format, I mean, as the telepathy comes online, we're also going to find that we can communicate with our ancestors who are not in physical form more easily. So then we realize that people aren't really dead. So we're going to have to go through a lot of think of transformational processes, Bella, where we start to understand about all of these things, because if we are in fear of death, that's going to compromise our decision making in so many ways, even for other people. Maybe if we're hanging on to people too much, you need to cross. We might actually be preventing them from going on their evolution mm -hmm. cycle. So um, it's not always a nice thing to talk about. But as we can see, we are moving into the time of year when death and rebirth is very much part of the ethers. As we go from summer into fall in the northern hemisphere, we can see the nature going back into the ground, ready for its own transformation in the earth. And as I said, it may not necessarily be about death, but it could be about the ending of something important and then moving into something else. So what can we do? The transformation of all of this energy is to be able to overcome any of those fears of death, of endings, to be able to trust and enjoy this journey of life, bring fun into your life, even just being outside, seeing something beautiful, an animal, nature, or whatever you can, seeing kiddos playing outside, anything that can bring you that sense of, oh, this is beautiful, life is beautiful, and we can 
be in that present moment of enjoying uh, everything, even the minor things. Uh, we also want to be able to let go of habits, things that don't help us anymore. Uh, it could be to do with alcohol, with drugs, with things that don't help you, bad food. Because um, it is, yeah, any lifestyle that, uh, and habits that we have, because it, it's even part of and connected to the Virgo energy that we're going to talk about. Right. The emphasis is in health. So what habits need to die as well so that you start a new lifestyle? Maybe not just habits, but maybe belief systems around be- types of oh. healthcare, whether we're going for something that's offered to us whether we're more inclined to be our own inner physicians and work maybe with the medicines around us and natural medicines as we like to talk about the plant medicines or whether we're still giving our power of our health away to other people to give us something that they decide is better for us so i think that that's also very much part of the virgo pisces axis we're going to be looking at the illusion and delusion around we, we will um, go medicines. more into that uh, with the virgo pisces because yeah. it is definitely one of the themes um, so letting go of habits, uh, letting go of fears and limitations, releasing and forgiving. Are you still having resentment for somebody, anybody, your family, your partner, your current partner, ex-partner, whoever it is? We need to let go of those because it doesn't serve anybody to be to be stuck in those. Uh, and then once we do this, welcome the new opportunities. Maybe once you empty that from your field, you'll feel lighter and then ready to go for something new for yourself. You may be blocking yourself of something new, of new possibilities. Uh, and so through doing all of this, we can then embrace the highest version of ourselves. So it's a very powerful wave spell is what I want to say. We're going to be able to bridge the old world with the new world. We're going to let die the old systems, the old paradigms. This is part of what we're going to be doing up to next year, I feel. Uh, But this is a good training moment to do this. And, and, you know, I just want to share something from the Skywalking 5D perspective. The power of forgiveness is when we really know that we're making progress on our journey to being a more fifth dimensional being more consistently. If we find it difficult to forgive somebody for something, we're still not in that fifth dimensional place. It's hard. I know sometimes there are some things that just really get your go. But if we can transcend those and make them somehow okay for ourselves and say, hey, it's just part of the journey. Everyone is that power of forgiveness once we've really got that down better i think that that's when we start to understand that we are becoming non-dual beings i agree all right okay so here we are uh with the world bridger uh as a very good wave spell for forgiveness and letting go and understanding what is it that we needed to learn from whatever happened previously so uh as usual you can use the wave spell with those questions to follow day by day Uh, Here, I'd like to remind everybody that Navigation Guide to Quantum Consciousness teaches you about each one of the tones, and we have now recorded already the first nine, about to record number 10, and we are uh, putting them in a package so you learn to work with this energy day by day with the uh, universal principles of creation. Right. So we are going to be, we actually have a series of special offers on QPW for this particular waste belt because we realize the intensity of it and we want to help as many of you as possible. So um, in relation to the navigation guide, our offer at the moment is to uh, to purchase the first 10 um, uh, modules or chapters, we can say, and receive the final three, chapter 11, 12 and 13, which are, of course, the critical uh, days or steps of the 13 uh, day waste belt or process. And here we have uh, the homepage of QPW. So that offer, the Navigation Guide to Quantum Consciousness, is running at the moment uh, with that offer of by the first 10 for 260, which is the same uh, price as it is for 10 times $26 on the individual chapters. And then you get all of the final three chapters for free. And then that uh, will conclude that particular course in that format. And then later on, we're going to be releasing it at a different uh, price, actually a higher price, as just a one package course. However, we're also running offers currently on better on the Sacred Art of Geomancy, which has a 30% offer on it. And also we have a um, special offer on the Path of the Jaguar, uh, which doesn't have a price discount, but for the first 10 people, the Booker, which is now just a few places left, me and Bella are offering the possibility of a free session for either a glyph activation or a more plant uh, shamanic kind of decoding and uh, healing kind of a session. So uh, more information about that uh, on the website and uh, also in the show notes. So please do check that out. But those are only running up until the um, the day of the uh, eclipse. 
So just uh, really another week or so on that. So please do take that opportunity. These offers are only going to be available at this time. And then probably later in the year, they, they won't be there anymore. So please do take these opportunities if these are calling to you. Good. So let's continue with the presentation. And now we're going to the astrology. What do you have to share on the astrology? Right. So as you know, as I always do, I try to bring um, some various different elements together, picking out a couple of the major days. Uh, this uh, this wave spell, we're, of course, we're going to be looking at the two big things coming up, the partial lunar eclipse on the full moon at 25 degrees of Pisces, which is day seven, September the 17th. For those of us here in the Americas, I think for those of you probably across the pond in Europe and further east are going to be having that on the 18th. So there's always that slight discrepancy. And again, apologies to our friends down under who are so far ahead of us. They're actually a day in front of us here in, in, in the Americas. We know that that's always a little bit tricky. And so we're just uh, putting that out there, too. So um, what have we got here? So on September the 12th, we have quite a nice um, kind of intense Sextile with Mercury at, uh, so let me just move that a second, I believe you can't quite see there. Um, yeah, so we have Mercury at nine degrees of Cancer, sextiling Mars at nine degrees of Taurus. So this is really a transit that's going to have a lot of speed uh, to, to it, particularly around our mind and our reflexes. It's going to give us a strong sense of purpose and um, initiative. And we were going to be able to do stuff really, really quickly and maybe more uh, than normal. So this can be done with courage and a fighting spirit, uh, but also gives us the opportunity to be very direct and very honest. And it's a great time to finish things. And perhaps it's time to be more bold than usual. So I get a very strong sense of energy with this, Bella. What about you? Or, Agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, everyone's talking about things speeding up, but with the energy of Mars, of energy and Mercury, of communication, this is a positive transit. It is a sextile, but it's also got a lot of energy, a lot of speed. And a lot of people have been reporting that they're finding things accelerated, their own behavior, their own energy, energy of people around them. So you I, can fit it in your yeah. body as well. Like people have been saying, oh, I'm hot, I'm super hot, I'm super cold. Yeah, yeah. The energy is so, it's so fussy as the, at the moment. It's like, uh, not fussy, Easy. Fizzy. You really yeah. feel it. Um, yeah, I think that's part of what's going on there as well, and intensified. Yeah, you know what? We did a little video, many of you have seen already, with our friend Stefan talking about kind of astral energies and symptoms that are being ascribed to all kinds of things, the solar flares, ascension symptoms, but also could be down to interference and energy fields. And I just want to share from my own perspective that for the last three or four days, I've been having a lot of very strong internal body heat, but often feeling cold at the same time. So sort of hot and cold, hot and cold. Um, I don't have anything in my system. I'm not carrying any bioweapons. I cleanse myself daily. So I'm not sure what it is. So if any of you out there are having similar experiences and can't really understand why on the one hand you feel hot, but also kind of shivery sometimes, I'd love to hear from you. I have my own theories, but I think it's down to the intensity of the moment. And those of us who perhaps might have more watery natal energies, particularly in Pisces at the moment, I think we could be feeling things a little bit strongly. That day is also a galactic activation portal day. It's also another special day in our house too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, so we have that energy there. Then we move into... Uh, we've got a really, really beautiful, uh, it's probably one of the most beautiful uh, energies and transits of the year. We've got Venus at 20 degrees of Libra, trining Jupiter at 20 degrees of Gemini. It's the 14th and 15th, right? Yeah, 14th, 15th, again, because we're, we're you know, so far west really in the time zones that many of you are going to be ahead of us. And some of these are actually happening late in the day here for us on, on those. So just bear that in mind also that there is a little bit of a uh, play there, but... Maybe this is part of what we were talking mm -hmm. about. The new possibilities could just show here, as long as you are paying attention, the 14th and the, and the 15th, um, because of this big trine, see what opportunities are coming your way in terms of higher education, mm -hmm. of money, of relationships, of, or any of those topics related to that. Right. And with the energies of Venus and, and Jupiter, we really got, you know, the energy of optimism, love, good cheer, lots of auspicious things potentially happening. Good time for socializing, having fun. Even we were joking that we quite fancy going to an amusement park, a water park or something. I think we all need a bit of fun right now just to help um, release some of the pressure yeah. and stress that maybe we're feeling. And it's OK to go and have fun. We don't have to be serious all the time, even if we are struggling a bit with some of the bigger energies going on. Uh, for all of you people out there who like to go shopping, uh, this is a time that's good to do that. And particularly if you want to buy things for the house, maybe, or to make your life somehow more rich and abundant and uh, somehow to feel good with the self-loving energy, I think, Bella. Yes. Right. 
So then we, uh, the other thing also I just want to point out that these are days four and five, these energies, uh, which is really about uh, creating the form and the structure and radiating from the center. So I think those are good energies to create that space that we need for ourselves moving forward. Mm -hmm. What choices are we making? Are we choosing the energy of Venus and love or are we perhaps getting more hooked into some of the more nefarious things being presented to us. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything? So, so, and it's a good time for relationships as well. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, as you said, for social time, for abundance, for success. So what is it that you want to achieve that it... Uh, remember that success is very it's a very personal thing so what could be success for one person could be different for the other so realign with what you feel is success and start setting your intentions so where am I going with my intentions moving forward in my new life right so we'll pull up um the chart in just a second for the first one but before we do I just want to also uh draw attention to this particular interesting uh, transit here which is Mars at seven degrees of Cancer square in the node at seven degrees of Aries and Libra so I did a little bit of a scan around uh, just online looking at other people's interpretations of this one and I came across something nice on Astro Matrix I think it was which I'm just going to quote here in relation to this particular aspect uh, in general I have the power to navigate the tension between my assertive drive Mars and my karmic path north node uh, finding balance expressing my needs embracing my creativity and nurturing my well-being which I think sums up this energy rather nicely. And that's also day six. Uh, again, some fluctuations there, depending on where you are in the world. Anything you want to add about that, Bella? How do you see Mars? Uh, obviously, it's a big energy for me and you being Scorpios, but with the North Node, it tends to suggest that it's all systems go. It's all systems go, and it will affect everybody. So I do feel that the whole collective is going to be very triggered mm -hmm. by the information to be shown, by the energy that is very palpable in the ethers. Uh, and there could be a big event that is going to make changes happen, a world bridger moment. Right. I mean, we ourselves don't know what is going to happen. There are lots of theories out there. Big flashes, solar storms, uh, three days of darkness. Take your pick. Uh, could be all of those at some point. Who knows? I think that we should be all prepared, though, that, that something radical is going to happen to all of us that we've never really consciously experienced before. And we don't know what it is, but we shouldn't be scared of it. No, no. And my my guess would be that there is going to be a collection of things. Mm -hmm. So it could be solar flares, it could be um um things, explosions, even. explosures, yeah. hidden truths that come to the light, uh, information revealed about what's happened for the last four years, a, a, a range of things yeah. that are going to change our belief system and our the paradigms are going to start shifting for the collective. So I, I do see it as the moment of a more mass awakening moment. Right. Yeah, me too. So we'll, we'll pop back to this slide in a minute, Bella, I think, but I want us to move on to the next slide, which I think is the one for, yeah, here we go, for the full moon in Pisces, the partial lunar eclipse. Uh, now, I know you've also made lots of notes on this one. Do you have anything you wish to share, Bella? To, it's to so kick off? big. Yeah, there is so much. Cool. So uh, to, co uh, to connect it to the world bridger moment is mm. definitely a powerful uh, full moon to release something, to have a big end ending so and to get ready for a new beginning so what big change are you ready to do in your life uh, and I think we're going to see those changes happen on the outside and the collective but what is your personal change that is going to make your life better once you once you do right I mean uh, we'll get into some of the particular dynamics because as you can see it's very very busy there's a lot going on we've got a few of our favorites Asteroids and bits and pieces that we include sometimes. Um, but here are my own notes for this. And Bella keeps ribbing me about this. But I've written the end of a world, not the world, but the end of a world. And I think that what I meant when I wrote that down ages ago when I was looking at this was it feels like it's the end of whatever the previous world was that we've been inhabiting. Yeah, I like the, I like to add to it. It's the end of the world as we, we know, know it. it. Hence why the end of a world, not yeah. their world. But uh, I've also written here, and I think this is also partly my own Piscean nature, is that there's going to be issues around water and toxicity. Um, this is a very watery full moon, of course, being uh, in, in Pisces, but also with the conjunction with Neptune, uh, which has just kind of shifted out of that anoretic degree a little bit, but it's still very, very palpable. Uh, deceptions could be revealed. Uh, powerful sensitivity for spiritual connection, possibly even across the veil into the realm of the so-called ancestors or the other world or even the dead, yeah. depending on how you view these things. Uh, but it's also a really good time for creativity. 
Um, so these are the major themes, I think, of, of the energy in Pisces. But we've got a lot of, a lot of other things going on here, Bella. So is there anything you want to pick out? Well, let's start with the axis of Virgo right. Pisces, which yeah. is super important. And it is telling us, again, the focus has to be in health and our immune system and our blood and uh, our mental uh, and spiritual health as well. So maybe let, let's connect with some new practices and new routines of, around that that will give us more peace of mind uh, and the detox that we talked about for weeks and weeks and weeks. Here is the moment of saying, okay, has, have you been doing your detox? How is your blood? How is your immune system? How is your energy? Have your routines been changing? If not, this is a good moment to do so for sure. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, as Bella said, uh, the you know the energy of Virgo is really the healer and very much about plant medicine. So it's an energy that we're very familiar with. And then the energy of Pisces is about the collective, but also with that Neptune energy there. What I've been getting all of this year is that that's there really to remove the illusions around healthcare and all types of uh, health and well-being, whether it's stuff that we've been given, something that we've taken on board without really questioning too much, it's provenance, maybe it's completely uh, an anonymous source for us, or whether we are actually perhaps engaging in a more Virgo end of the spectrum, which is understanding that all the medicine we need probably grows within 10 metres of where we live, uh, which is much more of a herbalist kind of perspective. Uh, but one that I like because it's much more quantum, and one of the things I'd like to share here, actually, Bella, it's just come to me, is that there is a sort of a philosophy that somehow plants appear in our garden uh, that we need. And that's been noticed by many, many people over the century. So that's not particularly new. But I came across a very interesting piece of information some years ago as to give a reason as to why that is. And it's because the uh, gut floor in our stomach at a quantum level connects with the microbiomes in the soil. And that level of quantum communication allows certain helpers, otherwise known as plants, to appear. All we have to do is be very, very dandelion about it and be in the present moment observe these new plants appearing in our garden, do a bit of research and see whether they actually match some of the symptoms that we might have somehow that we're not feeling very good about. Yeah, it's the quantum intelligence aspect yeah. that is going to come more online. And when yes. people start understanding, they're going to be blown away by the uh, how the how interconnected we all are and how we and the plants are all the same thing, part of the same thing. It's part of the same newosphere, right? Yes. Uh, so you were mentioning Neptune and around that Neptune, which is part of this moon and this eclipse and everything else, uh, I think is also to to show us that there has been too much illusion and delusion and we need to be able to come out of that. So the only way we can get there is seeing the truth and being able to remove our limiting beliefs. Many people have been saying this for a long time will have to review their limiting beliefs in terms of many aspects of our daily life, things that we've always believed to be true, may not be so. And so once we do, we also need to be doing our spiritual work because uh, that is what is going to give us that inner strength and to reconnect to our intuition so we can discern, oh, wow, all of this has been a lie. So what is true and what do I want to take as true for me moving forward? People are going to be a little lost with all of that. Yeah, I think this is really where we get to see whether our belief systems uh, stand up to to rigorous investigation or whether they collapse around us as they be become somehow disseminated due to the lack of stability that they're carrying. And I really do think that's a big way of saying there's going to be disclosures about yeah. medical stuff. And I think we all know what that means. But we've also got some really powerful stuff going on with Pluto here, haven't we, Bella? Uh, it's in a sextile to the moon. It's in a, a trine, I think, to Uranus over there in Taurus, and I think in a sesky quadrate to the sun. Any thoughts on Pluto's role now that it's heading back into Capricorn at this time? I think um, very similar to what we said in the previous one, is coming to uh, Capricorn to destroy the last part of the old paradigms, of the old systems, of everything that doesn't serve us anymore, of exposing whatever doesn't work and it's not been good for us so that we can shift into the new moment of um, going into the Aquarian time or Aquarian age, which is uh, finding out, first of all, that humanity has been a slave of a system uh, where they've controlled everything, our resources, the water, the energy, time, history, and everything else. Once people realize all of this has been going on, people and, and they find out that they have been slaves, they just didn't know they were, 
And then we're going to say, oh, my God. So all of these indoctrination and religions and everything has been here. And I, and I thought I was free. <laughs> uh, well, we haven't been really free. And I think it's going to be, what is your new idea of freedom? Can you accept that concept as uh, something that we haven't had before so that we can move mm. forward as a new human being, as a new humanity? Well, and you've just hit on something else, and that, that is uh, around Mercury opposing Saturn, which actually happens on the following day. But we can see that uh, down here at Saturn at 15 degrees, Pisces opposite uh, Mercury, or, although on, uh, on the 17th at 14 degrees. And I think that you've just hit on something there, which is like, how much freedom do we have in speech? And what do we understand about freedom of speech? And do we go for total freedom of speech in a very libertarian way? Or do we have some responsibility around that? And I feel that certain characters at the moment who are running big social media platforms are really putting that question into the spotlight. We can also see with some of these situations with the Telegram founder uh, that has been going on is that there is a lot of pressure right now to restrict freedom of speech. And are we the people going to accept that? and shut up as we were told two four years ago uh, literally being muzzled in some cases or are we going to say hey uh, we value our freedom of speech but we also understand that we can't just have a blanket freedom of speech because in that maybe there is some uh, more nefarious uh, tactics at work or maybe we are being forced to to comprehend how do we balance all of that yes if we want freedom of speech we have to accept the good with the bad or do we go for total censorship which is in somebody else's control and maybe eliminates some of the bad speech, apparently, but also actually um, doesn't allow us to question decisions being made by the people in charge. And so uh, I also want to talk about uh, that trine that we can see there with Pluto, uh, with Uranus and with the sun. Um, I'd say it's obviously a grand Earth trine uh, and it's going to get tighter for the equinox. So things are going to get more real. The new changes, I think, are going to happen and be more visible. So Uranus in Taurus will be uh, the new style of finance, the new style of agriculture, the new, the new way of connecting to Earth, I think. Uh, maybe the crypto world or blockchain world is going to be more visible. Uh, with Pluto, everything we've been talking about, like what new ways of living as co in community, what is going to empower us to be living uh, in a different way for new earth and and then with the sun there on virgo is like what are the changes on a day to day that we're going to make to to see that becoming a reality right yeah and also just seeing down there we were just talking about the mercury opposing saturn i also see that orcus the oath breaker is conjunct mercury so again i think we're coming to that point where it's the end of contracts end of things that we've agreed to or, or maybe that we've agreed to and haven't upheld and uh, with Pluto so heavily, uh, you know, aspecting both Uranus and the sun right now, I think that we may have some unexpected things coming into our awareness, being illuminated because they haven't been resolved. Maybe things from our past that we thought we dealt with, but haven't. Uh, none of us like to think about those things, uh, but for sure, it's definitely in the ethers. And I think what's really important about it from what we are seeing is that we go to that place of forgiveness and don't allow ourselves to get divided. Maybe I'm pretty sure we've all done things in our past that maybe somehow we wish we'd done slightly differently. And uh, maybe we even said or did things that maybe hurt other people. But hopefully we've forgiven ourselves enough in those processes and somehow rectified them in the 3D. So all of these energies uh, are going to trigger these different things in amongst us. And we also have some pretty strong feminine stuff going on we've got uh, Sarah's being conjuncted by Follis the centaur who got everybody drunk but he's also uh, conjuncting Ixion the master of destruction and chaos so we've got a little bit of some strong energy going on over there in the early signs of Capricorn which of course Pluto is now backing up into or has just backed up into and then we've also got Black Moon Lilith down here also conjuncting uh, 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 Juno uh, so those energies to me, Bella, all speak of lots of issues to do with the feminine coming up, which we're also going to see a little bit later in the month when Mars squares Black Moon Lilith. Okay. Um, so is there anything else in this moment that you see there that you'd like to, to pick up on from your own uh, experiences? Well, uh, to remind uh, everybody that, you know, the eclipses are moments of big changes. And this one, since we have the North Node there being so close to all of these, 
Uh, it tells us that uh, the changes are going to affect the collective and it's a big change and it's also connected to the eclipse coming on October the 2nd. So let's see what what this is going to bring to us. I'm thinking it's a big ending to many things for the collective. So the world bridger moment is not only in a personal level, but I'm thinking it's on a much more uh, collective way. Right, and the other thing I'm just seeing there is that our good old friend Hidalgo, the dwarf planet asteroid number 944, uh, which we like to bring into the mix, the uh, spiritual warrior, uh, as um, exemplified by the man Hidalgo himself, under the banner of the, the goddess, uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe, is in opposition to Uranus and Taurus. So, yeah, Hidalgo in its favoured sign of Scorpio, where it spends a lot of time in opposition to Uranus and Taurus. So that, to me, suggests unexpected uprisings, unexpected rebellions, or something suddenly appearing uh, seemingly out of nowhere, maybe. Uh, maybe people get a little bit too upset about some of the things they're discovering in the world. Maybe some things that have been given to them that they uh, didn't really understand. And perhaps that's suddenly going to have a kickback effect. It's very likely, especially with that position of Mars in Cancer and look at the aspect that it has to the moon. So, yes, there could be a lot of emotional aggression and that. Yes. So let's try not to create more division or to even shield ourselves of Mm -hmm. too much chaos or too much emotional distress out there um yeah i think that is very likely but we hope not too bad yeah um, but also on a positive note hidalgo is actually i think uh, being sextiled there by pluto so um as always what we're seeing in in the charts of the last few weeks is there's lots of strong stuff maybe with challenging aspects coming through but often what we are seeing is that the antidotes are also being provided equally depending on which way we look at the charts and the movement um so anything else you want to share there Bella, about this particular full moon eclipse before we move yeah, on? yeah that is very powerful we know that um the pluto in the natal chart of the u.s is, is there as well so yes. the u.s has a return again and this is the last time Pluto is going to be there. In November, we have elections. So changes in leadership, changes of power. How is all of this going to play out? Remember also that Cancer is the sign of the U.S. The sun is in Cancer. So Mars being there is also like, OK, um, there's going to be a lot of um, information and, and people being very emotional with the kind of the emotions out there being ready to right and without act. getting into the details those of you following the situation in america there is something quite big happening uh with the ex-president on september the 18th so that may be somewhere in the energy of, of the uh, natal chart for the us too so there's a lot of powerful things in the ethers and i think this is where we have to be very careful that we don't get sucked in to the polarizing nature of some of those things and and start uh, picking fights with people perhaps who are friends because of a difference of opinion Mm -hmm. based on information that perhaps is not even necessarily correct mm -hmm. uh, which i think is also a big part of neptune in pisces currently which information are we receiving in and uh, are we accepting it or are we just maintaining a place of neutrality and non-duality on it yeah and i like to say that with the astrology uh it's the energy that is palpable and everything has a lower octave and a higher octave so all of these we're seeing here also has a higher octave like what we were saying with Neptune, we can also understand that all of this is happening for a higher spiritual awakening. And if we bring compassion, we're tuning into the higher octaves and that could help that moment. Like is the transformation on how to deal with those uh, energies as well. Right. I feel somehow maybe it's a fun thought in this that Neptune's a bit like that movie. It's like, you want to know the truth? You can't handle the truth. <laughs> but you know what? You're going to have to handle the truth because if you don't, it could be even more uncomfortable for you. And I think that that's, that's tough, right? That's a sort of, oh my gosh. But it's like, would you rather know what the truth is? Uh, or would you rather live in denial and oblivion for the rest of your life with maybe things that you do need to know about actually going on for you uh, and then perhaps it being too late to do something about it? I don't know. And it's what the thought. wave spells do is they help you do these processes like in a much easier way, little by little, so that you can handle things little by little. I do see lots of people being overwhelmed in many different areas. Okay. Uh, and you see it with people exploding everywhere. So what we want to be able to do is continue our process, continue to let go, continue to bring compassion, and then tune into the next uh, energy, which is about service. What can I do to help these people uh, or to set, help this situation without getting too involved emotionally? But what can I do so that this uh, actually becomes a better scenario? Right.
Yeah, so you know, we could probably spend a few hours looking at this chart. There's still many other things there to to contemplate, but uh, still have a bit more to get through. So perhaps if we could just go back one slide, Ben, and we'll just look at some of the, yeah, just by, I just want to pull up the astro uh, bits in between this and the next chart, because there's a couple of um, things just to look at here. So yeah, uh, we, we talked about Mercury opposing Saturn, and then, okay, so we do have a slightly challenging transit, which we're just going to allude to here. Um, difficult to talk about this one, but Mars at nine degrees of Cancer squaring Black Moon Lilith at nine degrees of Libra. From where I'm sat, that looks like it could be a lot about possible division, projected division, perhaps between uh, masculine and feminine energies. Perhaps there's going to be stuff revealed that could trigger both sides. Maybe something's going to be revealed uh, that we've never thought of before. But I think really what could be revealed is how we've all been played into this division, which is just one of many that we have in our world. So perhaps we should be aware of that if it comes up around those days, just to watch that energy at play. Um, so uh, moving on from that one, we also have Mercury um moving into a square with jupiter uh so mercury at 20 degrees of virgo squares jupiter at 20 degrees of gemini and this is also a slightly tough transit um i think we have to be careful of um overdoing things you know we could have a very optimistic and positive and broad outlook on stuff but Perhaps what we could end up doing is trying to hold too much, trying to put too many things in. And I really feel that Mercury squaring Jupiter is asking us to take the big perspective and narrow it down, Bell, into something much more focused, much more um, clear to follow without too many loose threads. And uh, I think we also have to be careful and be, be a little bit careful about the language we use, whether it's it's in, insightful, whether it's triggering or whether we can perhaps use our words to massage a situation from a tricky place into a much more harmonious space. Um, but I think the integrity of our language is going to be very, very much under the spotlight at this point, not just ours, of course, but everybody's. Um, anything you want to add about any of those, Bella, before we move on to the equinox? Maybe not make things bigger than they are. Right. Yes. Again, that division energy. Do we get pulled in? Do we start venting on social media? stating our truth only to realize the next day that maybe we got it wrong and then we look a bit silly there's been a lot of that going on over the last few months so i would suggest that maybe even if we do get triggered suck it up take it to a tree put it back into the earth and then analyze why it happened to you rather than going onto social media inventing it everybody and uh, perhaps then regretting it uh, shortly afterwards as i know a lot of people have done in my own country over the last few months for a variety of reasons so I think the um the watchword here is be careful, right? Stay centered. Be mindful. Be mindful, rather. Yes, exactly. Um, we will have a quick look at the Libra Equinox in a second, but there on uh, the final day of this way spell, Venus enters Scorpio, uh, which is of course our sign, and uh, Venus in Scorpio tends to bring sudden intensity around our values, feelings, and relationships. Uh, so. Quite an intense end to this wave spell. But before we uh, finish up on the astrology, but let's have a quick look at the chart for the equinox, um, which is coming up uh, on the 22nd. It does vary a little bit from year to year. And anything that you've picked out here that you'd like to talk about? Yes, um, I actually think it's a good uh, equinox, uh, seeing the amount of trines there. Uh, I did pick up on a couple. Uh, so we have the moon trining um, Pluto there, here. Uh, here, there is a good trine there. And I see that probably um, that will benefit us in the middle of everything that is happening now. More people realizing of, okay, the, the power struggles that have happened, they, they have not been working for the majority of people. So people understand when it changes, what are we going to do moving forward? Uh, there is also a moon trying the sun, which I think is more of that, more illumination. How are we going to do this all together? Um, Venus also trying in Jupiter, so I'm thinking um, that is more of what you were saying just a minute ago, like, okay, uh, in, now that we know that some ideas and some uh, connections were not right, how are we going to improve our relationships mm -hmm. and then go into the new systems that are to come online? Um, I think that's pretty much it. Okay, and of course that's a trine you've just picked up on there. The moon is actually uh, it's it's in an outer sign conjunction, uh, crossing over there with Uranus into Taurus. So I think that it also could have some sort of quite electric energy to it. Possibly new downloads, possibly ideas about new technology could start to come through. But also, you know, when we enter it, this uh, these equinoxes, the balance between light and dark is shifting. So in in the northern hemisphere, 
the balance is shifting from light to dark, which I think is also interesting energetically, symbolically. But our brothers and sisters down under are going through the opposite process, of course, to maintain the balance. And they're shifting out of the darkness as they come into their own spring equinox and bring in the light. So as always, there's that kind of yin yang sense with these equinoxes at work. I could also read that um, um, Venus connection to Jupiter as, you know, expand more of the love and more of the consciousness so that uh, we can go through this in a much easier way, because we do need to bring a lot more compassion into this very intense period of time. Right. And I'm also just seeing now we just talked a little bit about that square with Black Moon Lilith and Mars, which it's a little combustible, but also that that's with the mean Black Moon Lilith. But when we look here, we can see that the true Black Moon Lilith is actually conjunct Mercury in Virgo. So I feel like whatever maybe came up with that square could start to get expressed a little bit with that Mercury in uh, Virgo energy as well. And uh, we also have quite a strong um, kind of conjunction going on there with the Sacred Flame of Vesta, Orcus the Oathbreaker, and then moving into Mercury. That's kind of like a little mini stellium there spanning 13 to 22 degrees. So Orcus sitting in the middle of those two energies, I think, again, is bringing up the end of maybe things that no longer service, contracts no longer service. Maybe the finance is also uh, going to change uh, currencies, changes, uh, mm -hmm. new things happening in the financial areas. Right, exactly. So uh, just a really a quick look at the equinox. I, I think that the real humdinger is a few days before on the eclipse. Uh, but of course, these are wonderful times to do ceremonies. Uh, quite often we're involved in ceremonies, we know many of our friends are too. And I would suggest really that uh, given the nature of the rest of this way spell, perhaps we want to be in a circle with friends doing something of a very high heart energy to help transmute maybe some of the other stuff that we can perhaps see in the ethers right now. And as always, you know, uh, our job looking at this is to find the navigational points, the charts through which we can navigate left and right, whilst understanding perhaps that there is chaos around us. It doesn't necessarily have to affect us individually. Yeah. So I, I do feel like this is a, a very good point. We have uh, the 14 and 15, seem like a very good couple of days. Yeah. The uh, full moon and eclipse seems very intense, but the equinox seem, seems to be giving us some options and possibilities to work with these energies. Yeah, all of which is to say, you know, uh, just ahead of, I mean, we're not going to be looking at now, but the, the following uh, waves fall after that, starting on September the 24th, when Mercury, interestingly, trying Uranus is going to be the beginning of the blue magnetic storm. So I would really, really suggest the preparation and acceptance and surrender is key during the World Bridge. We are about to bridge worlds, and that means we're going to be doing something maybe we haven't done before. It's like the Indiana Jones moment where he has to cross the abyss to, to find the Holy Grail and the night that's protecting it. He can't see the bridge, but when he throws the sand, it's there. So I would use that analogy as a way of saying, hey, maybe we can't see how we're going to get from where we are today to where we think we need to be very, very soon, but the pathway is always there. All we have to do is illuminate it somehow using our ingenuity and creativity. Um, I, I'll also like to add, um, connected to Virgo, the Virgo energy, because we have Mercury there, we have Vesta, we have uh, the sun moving into mm -hmm. Libra. Yeah. Um, the final review of the habits and how there is a whole system that doesn't work for this a Western uh, world or civilization anymore, which is bad food, uh, frozen food, terrible food that they put poison into, pesticides, a genetic engineer, everything they've done to our food and how there's an increase on health issues uh, all around the world, especially the Western societies. And then how the pharma, it's also connected. The people that own the, the, the food companies own the pharmaceuticals. So all of these people that then get ill, go and get medicated with all of these different things uh, that don't serve us and make the situation worse. And then they're also connected to the hospitals and the health system that also will say, okay, we need to operate and we need to do this. And we need, we just need to see all of the system that's been put in place for us for the last few hundred years that just is designed to keep us there stuck with the same things. So change of habits, changing your food, changing your medicine, going more into nature, uh, looking for other alternatives. Uh, I, I remind people here, we need to find solutions to free energy because that is what's gonna get us out of this slavery. And we also need to get out of the Gregorian time because that is the other cage that they have been keeping us into. So we need to start looking at the solutions. 
we all have the solutions. It's not just one person. We need to work with communities to move these uh, to what we need. Right. I mean, there's yeah, so, so much to think about there. But I also think that perhaps we're being asked to really review and reevaluate our belief systems and how attached are we to those and uh, perhaps maybe the revelation that uh, our beliefs are somehow founded on shaky ground or somebody else's perspective. Um, yeah. Part of the journey to being sovereign is really taking control of every single aspect of our personal life and not giving it away, particularly around our health and well-being. If we think about it, it's actually a pretty illogical thought to assume that somebody else uh, apparently will know more about our health than we do. That's real freedom and sovereignty. Right. When we really are able to go into our energy system, into our body and diagnose ourselves through our own perception of our own health and well-being, that is being truly sovereign. And I think that that is super exciting to think about um, because it also seems to me to make a lot more sense. And we shouldn't be having to pay for living on our planet. It is is not right. part of what we came to do here. We're sovereign and free. We, we're not supposed to be paying to live in the planet. So many things to review. Yeah, and uh, there are many other things to look at in this chart. I think if I looked at it longer, I could keep picking up more and more things. But for the astrologers out there who like to get into some of those little details, please uh, do have a look at the chart and post in the comments. There's always more that we could talk about. And of course, yeah. there are other great astrologers out there looking at those things too. But uh, Quantum Compass wouldn't be complete without this final part of the Jenny Bella, which is... The plant wisdom with right. sacred basil, one of our favorite plants. They're all our favorite. Right. <laughs> we say that about all of the plants. And yes, we we seem to have had this plant creep up on us over the last couple of weeks. Many people have uh, started using it for some reason. Maybe uh, some people we even recommended it to. But this is a plant that, yeah, in Sanskrit means the incomparable one. It is the energy of the goddess. I've worked with this plant many, many times. Uh, run ceremonies and retreats with this plant and really can um, testify to the energy of the goddess being very, very present in this plant. And that is the way that she is revered in India, as the ancient uh, Vedic Puranas even called it the most sacred herb in the world. It is a revered goddess, especially in India. But at the energetic level, uh, Tulsi is really the plant that we work with for soul retrievals, but also for having a look at those soul contracts that maybe Orcus has brought up for us recently and reviewing whether we are fulfilling our soul contracts. Maybe we've negated our soul contracts and maybe they need to be rewritten. So when we take uh, this plant into us, either as a tea or probably as a tincture, even as an essence, we can have that intention that anything at a soul contractual level, which hasn't been resolved or needs to be renegotiated at this point, or maybe just even cancelled with the energy of Pisces and Neptune at work, um, then perhaps that's something that we can ask this plant to do. It's an incredibly aromatic uh, plant. Even just to touch the leaves is to release a beautiful array of aromas but uh at the level of the herbal and um and medicinal this is an adaptogen plant and has been found to protect cells and tissue against industrial pollutants and heavy metals and why do you think that might be important right now bella <laughs> maybe because it's what we're talking about <laughs> right and as i put here it is a powerful adaptogen used in ayurveda but it's also high in sattva the principle of light perception and clarity which is really the qualities of the goddess and of course of the fifth dimension yeah. and also some of our other favorite plants that we've talked about in recent shows but i think the reason that this plant wanted to come through today bella is that she can help us bridge the worlds of our inner self across various timelines where maybe we have other aspects of our soul at work maybe in a good way maybe in an unresolved way and then if there is something that needs resolving we can ask this plant to bring it into our awareness so that we can locate lost soul fragments which is how we do our soul retrievals Tulsi, as the keeper of the book of souls knows where every single aspect of your soul is and indeed all souls pretty impressive uh, ability but also very useful if we're trying to make ourselves whole again Mm -hmm. very important plant at this moment right so spiritually emotionally and physically and just to remind everybody the course is still in our platform uh quantumplanet.world the course on mayan time and magic if you want to learn more about how to use the white spells and the soul kin and to learn more about all of these idea of new cosmology and of course we already looked at the path of the jaguar which currently we are running a special offer that if you book, you can uh, avail yourself of a free one-to-one, -one, one hour long session with either myself or Bella looking at uh, bio decoding and glyph activation, right, Bella? Yep. 
or in my case, we can go into more shamanic and healing uh, practices with plants and other types and of magic, astral clearing. astral clearing and geomancy, all of which I think is very important right now. So anyway, that's it really, Bella, for this, uh, I think, incredibly that's powerful quite long. <laughs> 13 days is coming up. So hopefully I haven't lost you too much there, but uh, there was a lot of information to share. We, we do this because we think it's important, Bella, to share. We live by this information ourselves. We make many important decisions based on the energy of the waste spell, what day it is, uh, whether I, you know, I need to skywalk somewhere. And you know we are in, I think, the uh, powerful energy of the world bridging. And if we really are on that kind of new earth timeline and frequency, then we're needing to bridge worlds out of the collapsing old paradigm into the new earth. Yes. So I think this is going to be an introduction on how we let go of the old paradigm and the old systems and we go into the new one. So I think we're going to have an experience during this wave spell of what's to come for the next few months, I think up to 2025. Right. And as we already alluded to, the next wave spell is the blue magnetic storm in this year of the storm. So look, you know, I think preparation being forward facing in the flow, in the Tao, seeing what's coming towards us in the river of life. It's probably uh, a good idea right now. And that's why we do these shows to give you those compass points to help you navigate left and right and to make the flow as easy as possible. But also I would suggest that this time, the most important thing is to be in your heart, to be in a place of acceptance and surrender. And most of all, I think not to be too attached to anything. It's our attachments and aversions uh, that actually give us most of the suffering in our life. And uh, when we really run that uh, kind of rule over everything, we see that it's true. And perhaps that's where we come to our non-dual self eventually. Yeah. So the, the key word is bridging. We're bridging the old world to the new world. What is your vision of the new earth? What is your vision of your life? Are you clear about what you want moving forward? That was, has been the topic. And in the energy of the world, Bridger, are you afraid of death? But are you afraid of change? Because sometimes those two words, death and change, can actually mean the same thing, depending on our perspective. And I think that if we're holding on so tightly to something from the old world, because not because we necessarily like it, but because we're just afraid of change, then we are actually preventing the process at a collective level. And every one of us who is trying to free up the process, we all need to do it together. Uh, where one goes, we all go. It's the mantra, I think, for New Earth. And we need to really check in with ourselves and see whether we're doing our part for ourselves, but also for our collective of brothers and sisters out there. Yeah. Last words uh, would be forgiveness and compassion. Very needed in this wave spell. I'll hold to that. I'll <laughs> hold to that. And... Of course, our connection in person is also really, really important. And uh, we've been really happy to be able to do this show, albeit a few days later than normal, but be able to do it in person because we're working with that energy. And we manifested this for ourselves, right, Bella? And we want to show you all how you can do similar things. So hopefully that's inspired you. Thank you again to my beautiful partner for helping us to put this together. And we look forward to seeing you all again very, very soon for either another show of Quantum Compass or one of our other offerings on QPW. In La Cache, everybody. In La Cache. Bye for now.